Dad please, I know that I'm a big boy, but I still need your help to wipe my poopy butt. Papa Flamby's Life and Calendar Good morning you absolute idiots! <sighs> Laughy guys, my boys! You might have heard it in the introduction. It has been one year already. Can you believe it? Once again, time for Papa Flemmy's Advent Calendar. Ooh, ay, 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 ay. Oh, it's, it's so exciting. Seriously. 23. Why did I wanted to show what 23 is? 23 little videos ranging from two to seven minutes, okay? Each and every day from the 1st to the 23rd of December. Also in the Teespring shop you are going to get 10 to 15 percent of everything, okay? Over the whole course of the December from the 1st to the 24th. And on the 24th of December you might have guessed it, Math Ventures Euler Scam. And I hope all of the people are going to get their shit done in time this time. Okay, I do hope so. I don't want to announce Matt Parker yet again without him being in Math Ventures actually. With that out of the way, we are going to dive right in. It's going to be exciting. We are going to start off with an old Putnam problem with a Diophantine equation. Q and Z are out of positive and negative integers. Okay, Z. And yeah, we want to find all the solutions to this bad boy right here. So how would you go about something like this? I for myself love to factor stuff. It's just like with polynomial division. I can never remember this shit, okay? Written division, I have no fucking idea how to do long division or synthetic division whatsoever. So I tend to just factor things. How could we factor this side here in a smart way, okay? This is how I go about problems like this. Well, you see we have Q times Z right here as a simple standing factor. So if we were to factor it, we would have a part with Q in there and a part with Z in there with a coefficient of one on both. Okay, I hope this does make sense to you. Let us take a look at, well, A plus Q. Okay, I hope this does make sense. This is a unknown one, we want to find it out. Times B plus Z. Okay, now we can start to factor stuff out. This is going to result in A times B plus Q times Z plus AZ plus BQ. Now we can start to find out some restrictions. Okay, this is a Diophantine equation and we have coefficients given. It's just like with a polynomial. We need our A to be equal to negative 3. Okay? must be equal to negative 3. Also we need our b to be equal to 7, okay? This is just how it is. Meaning overall a times b is going to result in negative 21, okay? It's thus negative 21. I hope you can see where this does come from. Meaning we can plug all of this stuff into here. Overall we are going to end up with um, Yes, we are going to end up with Q times Z and then plus 7Q minus 3 times Z, this is what you want, minus 21 being equal to 93, kind of, minus 21. Okay, do not get fooled. This it's a different equation than we have before, that, than we had before, okay? What we were to do, we would have to add 21 to this whole thing to actually get back to what we had up here. Meaning, minus 21. This side is going to result in, okay, this has been a side note. This side is 72 being equal to our two factors that we have up here. Meaning overall this is um, A has been negative 3, so we are going to get Q minus 3 times and then we are going to get Z plus 7. Okay, I hope this does make sense to you, okay? Those two equations are indeed equal because we had this new restriction. We had to get rid of the factor of A times B yet again for us to factor everything nicely. Okay, and now we can start off actually finding stuff out. I'm going to solve for 
I don't know, Z for example. Okay, this is something we can do. Or Q, it's kind of symmetric, okay? No, it's not symmetric, but it really doesn't quite matter what we choose. I'm going to, yeah, solve for Z right here, meaning we are going to divide by Q minus three. Z is thus um, 72 over Q minus three, and then minus seven. Now, Z is supposed to be out of the integers, positive and negative. Integers are closed under addition, meaning they also act nicely under subtraction. Meaning, if this whole thing is supposed to be out of Z, then that means that this is out of Z and this must be out of Z because the difference is also out of Z. Meaning, what we need to show is that this thing is out of Z. Or we need to find the restrictions on Q such that everything is out of Z right here. This is the basic thing that we won't do. Meaning, overall, 72 over Q minus 3 must be element of Z. Meaning, it's equal to some number A out of Z and we can solve for our 72. But we can do a bit better right here. We can just take a look at prime factorizations. This is just how I did go about this. This thing can only be out of Z is if our uh, numerator is greater or equal to our denominator. I hope this does make sense. If our denominator would be greater than our numerator, for example, one half, it's 0 0.5, okay, it's not in Z. I hope this does make sense. Meaning if we were to take a look at 72 and its prime factorization, 72 is 2 times 36. This is the same as 2 squared times 18. This is the same as 2 to the third power times 9, and 9 is 3 squared. Okay, this does look nice. 2 to the third power times 3 squared. Now, we know that 2 to the third power times 3 squared over Q minus 3 must be element of Z yet again. That's just the same um, argument right here. Meaning we need to find out Q such that factors up here cancel out. Okay, I hope this does make sense to you how this works. For example, one example would be that our three is nothing. Uh, our Q is nothing other than um, zero. For example, because then we would have negative three and the three and the three would cancel out right here. This is something we could possibly do. Now we are going to find all the solutions right here, meaning q minus 3 must be equal to any combination of those up here. So 2 to the p of power times 3 to the um, yeah, s power, for example. I really don't care. It can be equal to any of those um, yeah, situations that we have right here. And now we can dive right in. For example, um, q minus 3. And also we can take the negative branch then. Okay, Q can be a negative, so this is nice and symmetric in Q. This is what I meant before. Q minus three can be equal to two to the zero of power, three to the zero of power, meaning one. Meaning overall that Q is thus equal to four. This is something that works, so we have one. Okay, something over one is just something in itself. It does work out. And we can go on with this process. Q minus three is thus equal to two. Q minus three is thus equal to two squared, and we have Q minus three being equal to two to the third power. And we can go on. Q minus three is equal to three, and we have Q minus three is equal to, uh, this is the situation where we have six, and then we have um, three squared. And now there are other combinations. Q minus three is equal to 72, so the whole thing. And we also have Q minus three is thus equal to. What other solutions do we have? We have 2 times 3, and we have q minus 3 being equal to 2 times 3 squared. And the other possibility is that we have is q minus 3 is equal to 2 squared times 3, q minus 3 is equal to 2 squared times 3 squared, and the last one is 72. Meaning overall, how many solutions do we have in the positive branch? We have 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This, ah, no, there is one missing. Q minus 3 is equal to 2 to the third power times 3. 
Yes, and now we can solve for all of those, but those are valid solutions. Those are all the values that our Q can take and you can take a look at the negative branch then. So Q is also the solution to all the negative things that we have. For example, um, negative four, so this makes, ah, no, it's not like this. Um, let me think for a second. Is this all that we have? Are those all the things that we actually have? Um, we can also have negative one. Oh no, then we get two for example. Yeah, two for example, this is what we get actually. So what you need to take a look at is all those. So for example, for the negative branches, Q minus three being equal to negative one then. Okay, this is the negative branch that we can have and then we get two and 72 over two is indeed um, 36. Meaning overall we are going to end up with 24 solutions. I'm not going to write all of those out. Those are actually already, um, yeah, the solutions. My asshole burns. Real statement. I don't want to track this out for too long. This already goes on longer than I wanted it to be. I hope you did enjoy this first part of Papa Flemish Advent Calendar. It was just a little introduction. Don't forget to check out the Teespring shop to get yourself the Stay Negative merch, for example. Up until next video, have a Advent day. Ciao. And behind us, there's another building. And just a fun fact, my university is um, right next to this place too. So this whole castle, Schloss Sanssouci, has been turned into, un into a university, so that's quite nice. <laughs>